During their long history of evolution, mammals have taken up a variety of different forms. Among these, perhaps the most unique are the marine mammals. Having abandoned a fully terrestrial life, these animals have given way to some interesting groups. Today we'll be focusing on one such group, Pinnipedia. This clade, found throughout the world, is known for containing the seals, sea lions, and walruses. Pinnipeds are part of the order Carnivora, which contains a variety of mammalian carnivores. And within Carnivora, they're placed in Caniformia, the line containing animals such as dogs, bears, and raccoons. All of their non-canid caniforms are part of the clade Arctoidea, which contain Ursidae, the bears, and Mostoloidea, which include smaller carnivores such as raccoons, badgers, weasels, and the red panda. But from there, the placement of seals and their relatives within this group has been a long heated subject of debate. Some believe seals to be a sister lineage to the Ursidae. However, more recent studies have found that they're most closely related to the Mustaloids, with the two lineages forming sister groups. The earliest ancestors of the pinnipeds diverged from this group during the Eocene epoch, around 50 million years ago. From a glance, these animals looked remarkably similar to the Mustaloids. Puigilia, evolving around 24 million years ago, belonged to this group, looking very much like a weasel or a river otter. While not a direct ancestor to pinnipeds, it's closely related to the branch that eventually led to them, and thus can give us insight into how the transitional species for these carnivores might have looked like. This animal lived near the Arctic Circle, back when the region was far warmer than it is today. Puigilia lived a much more terrestrial life compared to its seafaring descendants, but it still had a couple of significant aquatic adaptations. These include a long, streamlined body, as well as flattened toes with a room for webbing. In life, it would have swam using both its front and hind limbs, unlike today's pinnipeds who only use their front or back limbs for underwater movement. Puigilia was not the only pinnipedomorph to be found in the fossil record. The Miocene Potomotherium, evolving 23 million years ago, has also been reclassified to this group and shares many of the same morphological characteristics of Puigilia. The earliest true pinniped was known to have evolved around the same time as these other two genera. And Aliarctos, evolving in North America around 24 million years ago, looked far more like the seals and sea lions that we're familiar with today. It also had a long body with big eyes, ears, and whiskers for better sight and awareness in an underwater environment, as well as a shortened tail and limbs that much more resemble the flippers we see on modern pinnipeds. Additionally, there's evidence indicating that, like the pinnipedomorphs before it, an Aliarctos used both its front and hind flippers to move underwater. Following an Aliarctos, the modern families of pinnipeds began to emerge, and it's here that we see the divergence between two main groups, the Phocidia, containing true seals, and the Otteroidea, containing sea lions, fur seals, and walruses. Let's begin by discussing Phocidia. The main family inside Phocidia is Phocidae. Phocids, unlike other extant pinnipeds, move using their hind limbs rather than their forelimbs, and unlike fur seals and sea lions, don't have externally present ear flaps. The earliest member of this group in the fossil record, Norophosa, evolved at the very end of the Oligocene, around the same time as animals such as Puigilia and Potomotherium. From these basal members emerged two major groups that split off around 16 million years ago, the Monashinae and the Phocinae. Monashinae is the group that contains seals found throughout the southern hemisphere, such as elephant seals and leopard seals. What set this group apart from other seals is that its hind claws were not as large. While today Monashinae is known to be a southern group, the earliest members of this subfamily were actually found throughout the northern hemisphere, with fossils of early Monashians being found in Italy. Monashinae in its early days was spread throughout both sides of the North Atlantic with genera such as Leptophosa and Monotherium being found in both Europe and North America. Today, Monashinae consist of three lines, with the most basal of which, Monashini, containing the monk seals. The other two, Merongini and Lobodontini, are sister lineages which contain the elephant seals, as well as the Weddell seals, leopard seals, crab eater seals, and Ross seals. It was initially believed that these seals evolved in northern regions similar to the earliest members of Monashinae, but it's now seen that these groups actually evolved further south and spread to their modern locations. The second subfamily inside of Phocidae, Phocinae, is home to all other species of seals. These seals are distinguished by much larger claws on both their front and rear flippers. These seals are found throughout northern regions such as the North Atlantic. Otteroidea, the next branch of seals, is composed of two different families, Ataridae and Odobenidae. 
Both of these lines distinguish themselves from members of Phocidia due to having forelimbs and hindlimbs that are more upright and developed for walking on land. When walking, otteroids can rotate their hindlimbs underneath their pelvic girdle to assist them in terrestrial movement. As a result of these differences in physiology, these pinnipeds spend much more time on land. Otobenidae appeared first in the fossil record. The earliest members of this family were actually tuskless, such as the early Miocene Proneotherium and the late Miocene Titanotaria. Walruses showcased a high level of diversity throughout their time in the Cenozoic, with groups such as Imagotarinae looking much more like sea lions with slightly longer canines like the Prototari of Japan, and the fascinating Dusignathinae, which contained walruses with two sets of upper and lower tusks, such as the late Miocene Gomphotaria. Modern walruses are different from seals and sea lions in that they generally prefer eating animals such as mollusks, employing a method of feeding involving taking in food through suction and breaking it down in their mouths. This isn't true for all fossil species though, as members of Imagitarinae maintained a diet similar to that of seals and sea lions, feeding on items such as fish instead. Also, just like seals, walruses are known to swim using their hind flippers. Although due to the nature of their hind flippers, they can also do this funny walk on land. Otaridae contains what are known as the eared seals. As the name suggests, these pinnipeds set themselves apart by their simplified dentition and the presence of externally visible ear flaps known as pinnae. They are unique among pinnipeds for using their front flippers for swimming. Despite the great variety of otarids found throughout the globe today, fossil evidence for these animals is relatively scarce. One of the first members of this family is the Miocene Eotaria. Two animals part of this group are fur seals and seal lines, and the major difference between the two are a thick layer of fur on the former. While fur seals definitely live up to the fur part of their name because of this, it should be noted that these animals are not true seals, which as we've discussed before are part of Phocidae. Despite this difference, the split between these two types of pinnipeds isn't as clear cut as it may seem, as despite the fact that most fur seals fall under the genus Arctocephalus, the other genus Calorinus is more closely related to other species of seal lions. As a result, this split is much more based on morphology than actual taxonomy. The evolution of pinnipeds showcases a clear picture of terrestrially inclined animals becoming more and more adapted for underwater life. I for one am really glad to see these animals with us today, because baby seals are really really cute. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Sorry for the long wait. I've been meaning to get this done sooner rather than later, but I came down with a nasty cold for the past while. Anyways, if you like this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to this channel, and leave a comment down below. I've covered a lot of mammals on this channel so far, and I'm wondering whether or not I want to branch out into other groups of animals. Since starting this channel, I've always had a bend towards mammals, but if you guys want to see something new, let me know in the comments. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time.